Harbaugh inspired glasses or are they Chase inspired glasses? These actually, it's funny, these actually were slightly Harbaugh inspired yeah. glasses, a little bit Conor McGregor. Oh, okay. So it's a little bit of mix. I remember I first saw these glasses on Coach Harbaugh and I wasn't sure how to take them, but it's like anything, it, it grows in you. So. They're very retro, like Buddy Holly almost. Yeah, I like, I like the retro. Sometimes it's a good thing. Do you feel like this defensive line as a whole, we know you know what your top four guys can do, but do you feel like as a whole you're ready to you know, prove what you can do here? That's what's great about going through a camp with Coach Harbaugh is that it gave the young kids an opportunity with so many reps just to get better every single day in like Luigi and Quiddy and I could just go on and on like the whole freshman class with Solomon and they all just did such a good, you know, I can name them individually. I'm not trying to exclude anybody. Uh, but they just did such a good stop, job, like, stepping up to the plate. Like, when, when they first were balancing school and football, it seemed like they struggled a little bit, somewhat like Rashawn did last year, uh, just with, like, adapting to college. Uh, but they, I think they've really come along, and uh, I think you'll see in the Florida game, and as the season goes on, they'll really be a contributing factor for us. Kugler says your glasses are probably fake. <laughs> Uh, as Conor McGregor says, you know, his quote was, uh, you know, the glasses are fake, I don't need them, but I, it's just like the way they look. But for me, I, they are actually real. So, <laughs> I get, But I do get that a lot. I get a, a lot of people want to try them on and, and test them. So, Are those intentionally supposed to look like Coach Arbaugh's frames a little bit from last year? Uh, that's, they asked me that earlier. I had, I had noticed, like, uh, th two or three years ago, I had pulled my hamstring in camp and I was in his office, and it's like one of the most memorable experiences for me. Uh, we were in his office, and I just kind of saw a side of Coach Harbaugh that was like a little less edgy than he, he normally puts on. He just had these glasses, the tortoise shell, and that was like my first experience, like noticing that, and it was, it was cool. So, I mean, it's in the back of my mind. I did not buy them to, to be like Coach Harbaugh, though. <laughs> I mean, did he mention that he has a compliment you on him? I think he did. He saw me after practice. I had uh, went and like – Took my shoulder pads off, and there was a bunch of guys like doing some races, and came back and uh, had my glasses on. He's like, "Hey, nice glasses." <laughs> so, I got his approval. Where have you seen your game improve the most since last year? I think uh, my footwork has definitely improved the most in terms of a selling different moves and b uh, my distance gained on my steps. I think uh, it struggled a little bit last year, and I think it's going to be. Uh, my most improved thing, which is going to help me in dividends. And my weight helps, too. I, I, um, if you look at me on film, I'm way, uh, way bigger and a lot stronger than I was last year. So, Does it hang over you at all that you're kind of filling big shoes with what Taco did? I mean, you, you think about it, but at the end of the day, like, you got a job to do and you go out and do it. You know, you don't think about uh, you get caught up in this and that. and it's just like it just, it just bogs you down. So I'm just going to go out there and give it everything I got. And if that's not enough at the end of the day, uh, you know, you pick yourself up and say, you know, you gave it your best shot. That's, that's not all you can do. Chase, given how last year ended, what, what questions? But I, I, hope, I hope to fill those shoes. So that's that my. A, that was a hardball moment right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to finish up. I don't want to leave it as like, oh, I don't think oh, I'm going to be able to do it. I, that's, not, that's not my point at all. I, I definitely think I can fill those shoes. Uh, but given, given, our last year, given our last year ended, what, what questions does this team have to answer? moving forward and, and when you get started here? I think that's your job, right? You ask me the questions. Uh, they, they, we got to answer, but uh, <laughs> no, we, we got to, um, we just got to go out and, and do our job. I think we got to prove that uh, the inexperience in the youth or the quote unquote inexperience, because we've got a lot of people with experience uh, is not actually a problem, but rather uh, it could be an advantage for us. I talked about over there, how the inexperience in the youth uh, could actually help us form a new identity, one that may be better than you know, last year's senior class or uh, last year's just team identity as a whole. So I, I think, and so far, I think it's it's helped us, uh, you know, form this new identity and and then help new people step up into leadership roles that they might have not. So. Cause you're talking about you. Your yeah, secondary is very very young. And what does the defensive line have to do in particular to kind of make their jobs a little easier for the younger guys in the backfield? Uh, not just the younger guys in the backfield, but the younger guys maybe in the linebacker core. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't, it's not an age thing. You know, everyone wants to make everything, uh, you know, this guy's a young guy or that guy's, you know, it's just uh, it's a football thing, really. It's, you know, in our defense with, with us running a 4-3 like we do, uh, it's important uh, for, for us to 
like the interior guys, especially like a lot of times, like Florida will try to double team people uh, and then come off on the backer. But if the defensive lineman gets caved uh, or doesn't do his job, then the, basically the lineman has to uh, block or gets a free chance to block a linebacker, which is just a mismatch. So it's really important in our defense uh, that everyone does their job, and especially the defensive linemen. So a lot of it falls on our shoulders, but Coach Brown does a good job of making sure uh, the linebackers know uh, that they have to take guys off of us too. So it's kind of a, a mutual relation, relationship. What do you remember most from that Florida game two years ago? I was, um, I got switched from playing tight end and like for that game, so I was playing defensive end, but I really didn't know much about the defense. They kind of just had me on scout team, just trying to get used to the position. And I just, I remember like going into it though, like some of the takeaways, like um, I, I felt like they hadn't really respected us as much as maybe they should have, uh, but it is what it, it was what it was. And I, I think they, they definitely don't take that, take us for granted anymore. And I know that they're going to come out fully prepared this time around. So Can we'll you, be ready guys, for that. Got about two minutes. Can you reflect on what's kind of been a windy path for you? You talked about position changes and now being a key member on the defense. What has that been like for you over the past few years? Just like being a key member of the defense? Going from, like you said, being on tight end and right. going back to defense. It's it's just been a day-by-day -day journey that it's like it's so tough to, to really tell. Uh, it's a bad analogy, but it's the only thing I could think of on top of my head. It's like... Uh, it's like when you, you live with your dog and it starts gaining weight and then somebody comes around and it's like, oh, your, your dog's gaining so much weight and you couldn't even tell. Uh, but really... Uh, <laughs> like, you have a dog? But I do have two dogs back home. <laughs> so it's like, it's just like, for me, it's like, it's been like such like a, a gradual transition, like gaining weight, getting stronger, like getting smarter on the football field uh, that it's, it's, it's hard to tell me that transition, but uh, it's... It's been great, so it's I'm happy where I am, and I'm I'm ready to work harder. So Chase, you've been through a lot of camps before. What have you observed when you watched Rashawn prepare, work, all the things? What have you noticed about him this last eight months? Just the whole. Yeah, Rashawn's an animal, and I'm I'm lucky to play across from him because every day, I, you know, I think we uh, it's a kind of a give and take relationship. I think some of the stuff in in practice, and I think I can maybe do a little better or just in a different way and I think uh, it kind of feeds into you know some of his process and I know certainly that he does some stuff and I'm, I look at it and I'm like you know this is what I got to incorporate into my game and uh, something I can work on so it's, it's a great it's a great relationship and I, I love having him uh, on the other side of me. Is he older than a sophomore? I mean, does he seem like he's older like he's, he's... Uh, sometimes it's like on the football field he certainly does uh, but he, he's got a like I know he puts on like a kind of a front, but uh, with the defensive line, I think uh, he puts he has like a softer side. He's he's pretty uh, pretty fun-loving guy. So in a good way.